So um, we'll get started here with our next speaker. Uh, Ollie Betts is the lead developer of the uh, Zapian, is that how you pronounce it? Zapian or Zapian. Zapian or Zapian search engine library. Uh, he spent 13 years working in the field of information retrieval, including running the Euroferret website, which was the most comprehensive index of European web pages in its day. He's been working on Zapian for 10 years and makes a living as a freelance developer and consultant on Zapian-related projects. Ali is originally from the UK, where he studied mathematics and computer science at Cambridge University, but he now lives near Wellington, New Zealand, and he once broke a toe falling off a cliff in Majorca. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'm the most active developer of Zapian, um, and as you heard, I've been developing for about 10 years. Um, now, Wikipedia is quite interesting from um, a kind of information retrieval point of view because it's a, it's a good text collection because it's fairly large and it's freely licensed. Um, there are a number of text collections available, in, um, especially in the academic field, but the problem with a lot of them is it's quite hard to get access to them. Well, it's quite hard to get access to them unless you kind of know someone or if you, you're doing research into them. You can't simply freely download them the way that you can Wikipedia. Um, and reproducibility is quite important for these things. I mean, it's all very well doing a, a, a scientific test or a benchmark, but if no one else can verify it, um, it makes it a lot less useful. Um, so I've been using Wikipedia for tests for a while, um, and I thought it might be interesting to do a talk about it. It's, the English version has just over 3 million pages. Um, you can download an XML dump, which has all of the pages in it, and it also has some other extraneous stuff. Um, like uh, it has all redirect pages and a few other things. Um, and that XML dump is about, uh, I didn't write it down, it's about, it's about five and a half gigabytes, if I remember correctly. Um, that's compressed with BZIP. If you uncompress it, it's about 27 gigabytes. Um, and on my laptop, it takes over half an hour to decompress it. Um, if you printed out the XML dump in 10-point font, it would stretch around the Earth's equator if it's a single line. So it's, it's kind of big. Um, does anyone know how many sheep there are in New Zealand? <laughs> it's, um, it seems to be in decline from what I could find on the net. Um, and I couldn't find a very accurate current figure, um, but it seems for about 30 million, probably. So, for a lot more sheep than Wikipedia pages. Uh, so, you know how many kangaroos there are in Australia? <laughs> they do. Um, again, I, I couldn't find a totally reliable figure, but it seems there's a, perhaps a similar number of kangaroos to sheep in uh, New Zealand. So, it's, perhaps it's not all that big after all. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I heard LCA was coming to Wellington, and since I now live here, I thought I'd do a talk about it. Um, I heard it's quite competitive to get a slot, so I thought I'd come up with an interesting sounding title. And someone had just done a benchmark of Zapien and several other engines. And it was a bit of a frustrating benchmark because they hadn't set up Zapin very well and so it didn't come out terribly well compared to the others. And the data they were using wasn't, very, wasn't um, all available, so you couldn't just repeat the benchmark tuning things properly to see how it would have compared. Um, so I was trying to think of something to talk about and I thought, well, I could do my own benchmark, use the freely available Wikipedia data. And um, it would sound kind of attractive for a program committee perhaps. Um, and it got accepted, and well, how hard could it be? So, before I actually proposed this, I did think about ways in which I could do this. And I did some initial tests just to prove that it wasn't completely impossible. Um, some of the options I considered were, you can index not all of the text of something. The, I mean, the structure of many documents consists of a kind of an initial introduction, followed by the, the meat of the document, followed by a kind of conclusion section at the end. Um, so, I mean, a scientific report of an experiment has methods and then it has uh, the results and the conclusion. A scientific paper has an abstract at the top and it describes the paper and then it generally has some sort of conclusion at the bottom. 
Uh, even sort of, well, even this talk, you quite often you introduce the talk at the beginning, you give the talk, you can do some conclusions at the end. Um, so if you just index the title and the introductory paragraph, the start of a document, that actually is fairly representative of the document and can give you a, a kind of an overview of a document with a lot less text to index. So that was one option I'd considered originally. Um, another one is to try and pick representative terms from the document. Now, the, the Euroferrit search engine, which I used to work on, um, as you heard mentioned in the introduction, the way that worked was we had a, a script which went through the document and it would pick out the best 60 words. And the way we did this was we we believe words near the beginning of a document were important, and we believe words that occurred more often in the document were important. So it simply had a count of it would start at a number and decrement as you went through the document, and then you'd, you'd, for each word you found, you'd add that to a tally for that word in a kind of a, a, a set, essentially. And then at the end, you'd just pick the best 60 from a set and index those. And that works remarkably well. And, I actually found an academic paper on this, which I, I couldn't really find when I was preparing for this, um, but it was from about the 50s, so predating computer science. It was more library science, really. And I think it was to do with the, the Cranfield tests, which um, are quite famous in academic information retrieval. Um, and that, what he'd done was, it was, it was with human indexing rather than computer indexing, and he was looking at the, the optimum number of words to represent a document by in the index. So this is it's more like the index in the back of a book than a, a full text index in modern times. And so what he did was he got people to index the document with different numbers of terms and see where the best point was. And the graph kind of goes like this and then tails off again. And the best point is around 50 or 60. So it seems that the, the approach we found in Euroferrit was actually had a kind of an echo of a previous, a previous study in a, a a fairly different um, yeah, human indexing rather than computer indexing. Um, and, well, another thing I could try and do is try and optimise that in some more. Um, but unfortunately, the building a big index from scratch is quite well tuned already. Um, so I wasn't sure there was a lot of mileage there. But I, I did some initial tests, and I figured at least with one or the other I could do something. Um, But when I actually came to work on this, I thought about it some more, and then someone hired me to do some work on the back end and making it smaller. And in the process of that, that has actually made it somewhat faster. So for the tests, I'm using the, the development back end of Zapier, which is called Brass, and I've disabled the term list, which is a feature. It stores the list of words which index every document, um, it's useful for doing a perfect deletion. If you don't have this list of words, then the only way you can delete a document is to add it to a dirty list, exclude it from searches, and then merge back later to do a kind of cleanup. Um, it's also useful for a couple of other, other features inside Zapian. Is that the projector or the... No, it's my laptop. I'm just saying from the screensaver. Oh, well. Um, but anyway... That's now an optional feature, so I turn that off because it's, it's a bit of overhead we don't need for this case. So essentially the approach I decided to take was um, to divide and conquer, which has worked since Roman times, so it worked for me. The, the cloud is actually quite a good way, to, a place for um, building search systems because you want to scale them by demand, and um, you can do that quite easily with cloud. You can fire up another server when your search load is high. You can fire up a server to rebuild your database. It's, it's quite a good fit, really. Um, and perhaps uh, in many situations, the search is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a useful and often a key part of the, the site, but if the search is down, the site isn't totally unusable. So if you have slight worries about the cloud from a, an uptime or security point of view, it's perhaps an area in which you might worry about that less. And obviously, that depends on your application. Um, so 
I, I've been using Amazon EC2 for this. Um, the machine I picked to use is the quadruple extra large, which sounds like a, a fast food thing. Um, it comes with 68.4 gigabytes of RAM, which I still find slightly mind-boggling. And it has eight virtual CPUs. So, what I've decided to do I took the Wikipedia XML dump. That's about 27 gigabytes. And this is the uncompressed version. If you split this into eight pieces, that's one per CPU. And then this is stored on um, the Elastic Blocks, um, BBS Elastic Block. I'm not sure what this stands for. It's, um, it's a way of having a kind of a virtual volume um, in the EC2 system. Um, and I wrote a fairly simplistic XML parser, which doesn't really parse XML. It just parses what the Wikipedia XML dump looks like. And the index process it takes a start offset and an end offset into the file. So this is one eighth of um, 27 gigabytes. And this is, um, well, a quarter of 27 gigabytes and so forth. And you give it the start and end offset. And the idea is that process will index the data between this, the next one index between this. And I just start all of those in parallel. So each one gets a CPU. Um, and the EBS I.O. seems to cope very well with that. If we look more closely around here, then the inside the XML, each Wikipedia page has a page tag at the start. Um, so the way that it, each indexer knows where to stop is when it gets to a page tag, it checks the offset in the file it's at. And if that's past its end offset, then it will stop. So each one actually indexes slightly beyond its end point. And when it starts, it scans forward to the first page tag after its start point. Um, so, in fact, each one starts and stops slightly after these by wherever the page spans, so you don't get a problem with it um, chopping a page in half. Um, I also use this kind of a sliding buffer affair where it loads in a chunk of data, scans through it, and then when it can't find the next token it wants, it will copy just the end part down to the beginning of the buffer, and then bam in the next chunk. So, if you run these processes in parallel, then um, they take surprisingly different lengths of time, it seems. And I found this even if you run them separately. Um, it seems that the, the spread of pages in the dump file is quite uneven. Um, it's sort of, it looks like it's alphabetical for a bit, but then it kind of wanders off somewhere else, and then it comes back to being sort of alphabetical. So, I don't really know quite why that is. Um, I guess it's something to do with how they put pages into the, um, into the SQL database. Perhaps there's some sort of reload the database from time to time and new pages are added and the ones that are added weren't already there go to the end. It's kind of interesting. Um, but the, the times I'm getting vary from um, 23 minutes was the time the first one finished in and the last one finished in 45 minutes. So that's about the length of the talk. Um, and then you can take these databases, and there's a feature in Zapium that allows you to search over several databases at once. So you can just search eight databases as if they were one database, and you've got your search system finished. Um, 
You could get, then go on to merge them into a separate database, but that takes longer. So I didn't do that as part of this because I used up my length of the talk. Yep. Between like the, this database has this idea of what is being indexed, and this idea, this database has another idea, and so you have a conflict between them. Like, like I come from version control, so conflicts are sort of always there. Well, the merging, the merging doesn't try and merge documents. The documents are kind of renumbered to not clash. So merging is really just accumulation, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's more like concatenation, perhaps. Um, I mean, it's, it's inside Zappian you have, um, indeed in pretty much any information retrieval system, you've got to have something that tells you that for a particular word, so for example, for sheep, that's got to tell you the list of documents that sheep appears in. Um, so if sheep appears in some documents in here, some documents in here, some documents in here, then some sort of merging or joining together at least needs to happen to that information. Um, but there's not really a, I mean, I guess you get a kind of a, a conflict if you've indexed the data in different ways that are incompatible. Oh, you're thinking about the mail indexing and having your tags and... Um, I mean, the, the merging, the, the fast mergers um, called uh, Zappian Compact, which is... Originally, its purpose was to take a Zappian database and copy the data from it to a second new database, um, but it does the copy in order. And there's a... If you write a lot of blocks in a row in linear order. Um, lots, of, lots of entries to the underlying B3 structures happen in a linear order. It packs them in really compactly. Um, so this has, it removes any dead space that was left over, which hasn't yet been reused from updating the database, and it ensures that it's maximally packed in the new database. Um, but it also has a feature where it can just take several inputs and combine them into a single output. So that's, that's what I would have merged these with had I done the merging. Um, does that kind of cover it? I mean, you could write a tool which did more complex things, but it would be slower because this works at a, a level where it doesn't need to actually read the data. It just puts it back in. I'll come back to you at the box. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, what have I got to... Yes, okay, so um, the other nice thing about the using the cloud for this is, there's a slide for that, um, the costs are quite low. I mean, for an hour of computer time on this um, system, it's uh, $2.40 US. Um, and that's if you want to have it kind of now. If you're prepared to... Um, have it when Amazon wants to give it to you. You can get the spot price, which I had a look this morning. It was 89.2 US cents an hour. Um, and again, if you've got a search system where you want to update it periodically, but you don't necessarily want to have it up to date right now, or if you have, you're doing some kind of testing or research, it's quite useful to be able to run the system at some point in the next few days, but you don't really worry too much when, and it's going to take a few hours or a few days to run, so... It doesn't matter too much to you exactly when it comes back. Um, so his spot price is quite an attractive feature too. And um, that's, well, that's all I have to say if it's part of the actual talk. But questions, welcome. Anyone? A 
assume your filing system is, yes. Yes, it, it, it should either have or not. I mean, if a filing system doesn't actually yeah. provide that, then it, it, it'll use F sync or F data sync. Um, but there's some, there's some issues with, um, because it gets into the, the drive, the, the OS usually only checks that it's got into the drive's cache or the drive controller's cache because it can't really know more. Um, on OS X, you can actually determine that. Um, and we use a special call to do that on OS X. But um, we try as hard as we can. Yep. Oh, it's an open source project, so I don't know everyone who's using it, but it's, um, it's used. Well, it's, it's you're some. I am, yes. I mean, it's used by several newspapers and other news organizations. Um, so, Desite in Germany use it, um, and Anna Nova, who is a sub organization of Orange, use it, um, and there's a few other sites. Um, it's used by the G main email index. Um, it's used quite heavily by Debian. They use it in some of the package stuff and um, the wiki and the mailing list search. Um, yeah, DebTags uses it. Um, so, it's, <laughs> yes, there's not much email, email index. Okay, if there's uh, no more questions, then thank you very much, Ollie, for that presentation.